so you are a highly respected journalist at a mainstream media news outlet. Now, I know many of you that watch this show might actually be saying, Dave, you know, we don't want to think of ourselves in that particular example, but just bear with me. So anyways, you're a journalist and you have just recently been hired by a, uh, a very, I guess you could say high level network or respected network. Okay. You're then given all your contracts to sign. You're going to go, you know, for a two or three year deal with this network and see how it goes and things like that. And whether you're going to be a writer, you're going to be on screen, you name it, right? On the field reporting, things like this. You then at the end notice that there's a, a, amongst all these documents that you're signing, there's something that looks like an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, something that people usually sign when, you know, companies or uh, very powerful individuals are trying to keep you quiet or suppress you, right? And so... You're about to sign it because you think, okay, you know, this is just the way the bureaucracy of the network, the process of corporations and what have you. Then all of a sudden you notice a symbol of the company on the top right corner of this particular page. However, the symbol on the top right page here is very different than that of all of the previous documents and pages that you've signed. So you know that this symbol does not represent that of the network. And so you start to ask around and people start to say, listen, don't ask any questions. Just sign the paper. Don't worry about it. Right. Next thing you know. All of a sudden, you start having these very strange dreams, all of these types of voices in your head. You go see the doctor. They think you're bipolar, things like this. They put you on all these different kinds of drugs. And again, no disrespect to those that are on bipol uh, that are bipolar and taking medication. I've experienced similar issues, so believe me when I tell you I totally understand. But for the sake of this example, you start all of a sudden seeing things that look like ghosts. However, they look more like, believe it or not, insectoid slash sort of bee-looking ghosts, if you want to call it. And you only see it... Oh, and you only see them, excuse me, in your be uh, bedroom at night, and it looks as though there's some type of spiral beneath them. Now, let's take a look at what today's episode is called, Angel's Peak, using blue blood plasmoid auras to induce hexagonal harvesting. That might sound confusing, it might sound like a bit of a part of my English, a clusterfuck, but I promise I will explain all of it to you shortly. Now, before I do that, I just want to say I will be getting back to the shoutouts very soon. I'd like to thank all of you for the support on, uh, on upon my return, and again, thank you so much for the support you've shown Camden as well with that being said we do have a patreon it does help support the show so anything that you could do in terms of being able to help support us we would truly appreciate it we don't believe in accepting money unless we can at least give something in return with regards to bonus episodes and things like that so let's jump into it csl.noaa.gov this is noaa the official noaa government website now remember noaa is the same institution that covered up that discovery of an alleged underwater, I guess you could say, massive uh, creature that was three to four times the size of New York City's Eiffel Tower, right? And then when it was taken to court, all of a sudden the files were misplaced. It's This is that same company, right? Or that same institution, agency, you name it. Let's take a look at this right here. The Las Vegas Ozone Study, LVOS, and I quote, this from June 2013. The primary objective of objectives of the Las Vegas Ozone Study LVOS are to assess the influence of long-range transport from Asia and stratosphere to troposphere transport on surface ozone concentrations in Clark County and estimate the relative contributions of these proceedings to high ozone events compared to local ozone production, regional transport from Southern California, and other sources such as wildfires. Okay. End quote. Why do I bring this up? I bring this up, folks, because first off, we have to understand that June 2013 was a very significant year for this study to be conducted. Again, members will know pertaining to that of the year 2012 and, of course, the number three and the elevational institutions that follow with that. However, what we're going to notice here, too, is that if we see here, and I quote, in accordance with the recently... Pr promulgated rule on treatment of data influenced by exceptional events, end quote. Interesting. Notice something here. Notice how they're subtly inserting these exceptional events into their study. Coincidentally, in the year 2013, right? Now, take a look at these images of Angel's Peak right here. It's very difficult to find. If you do a simple Google, and maybe in different parts of the world, different results might come up based on the algorithm. You're not going to find it. How did I find out about Angel's Peak? It was thanks to the 2001 National Press Club Conference, folks. The over 400 military whistleblowers that talked about all the different experiments and all the different things they did with regards to extraterrestrial technology and reverse engineering uh, the aircraft and, and their technology and them willing to testify in front of Congress. Now, let's jump over here to fractalfield.com. By the way, it's called Angel's Peak because that is allegedly where the most intra and interdimensional beings appear as well as paraterrestrial beings. There's quite a significant difference, of course. 
But let's take a look. So this here is actually entitled Phase Conjugate Fract uh, Fractality, How Gravity is Caused. This is from Dan Winter. I'd like to thank our very good friend of the show, Riel, for actually pointing me towards this particular uh, research and website. Take a look at this right here, folks. You see the spiraling of the way, again, I'm not a scientist. I'm not claiming to be one. You see the spiraling of energy in the way it shows compressions and the hydrogen atom and phase conjugation. All right, and it says here only the golden spiral charge compression trajectory allows the phase velocities to interfere recursively constructively. Therefore, only this geometry turns charge compression towards the center into charge acceleration towards center named the gravity. End quote. Interestingly enough, if we take a look at this incident right here, folks, timefordisclosure.com, the Northridge earthquake UFO encounter. Now, keep in mind the first website we looked at from North. Uh, Noah's website about anomalous, uh, you know, events around Angel's Peak area. On the morning of January 17th, 1994, a massive 6.8 earthquake struck the city of Northridge, California. It caused millions of dollars worth of damage, destroyed hundreds of structures, and 57 people lost their lives. Inter before I go on, interestingly enough, the same 57 people that went missing very mysteriously. I have to be careful what I say publicly, but again, members will know. What many people don't know about is the UFO connection. On the night before this encounter, several people in the surrounding area had incredible UFO counters. One of the witnesses Marcellina X was a resident of nearby Topanga Canyon. In the hours preceding the Northridge Crake, Marcellina experienced a series of precognitive events and along with her boyfriend and others saw numerous UFOs. This led to a profound spiritual transformation and two weeks later, a face-to-face -face encounter with gray extraterrestrials. Now take a look at this. She basically had an interaction with, uh, with the extraterrestrials. But you see here that they are trying to tell her in many different ways, different forms of energetic messages using telepathic thought and interfacing with thought. Now you might be saying, Dave, what does this have to do with anything? Well, every single one of these witnesses that have been spoken to from the Northridge earthquake UFO encounter have noticed something. Every time they were spoken to telepathically by a particular gray um, species of gray aliens, could be the regalians, probably not. But again, if you watch the previous Let's Get, Van Let's Get Banned video about my the perspective on that more than likely but again it's hard it's hard to say right with that being said all witnesses describe a hexagonal sort of flash or symbols or vision if you will being emitted why is that the case why is that so i guess you could say prevalent in in uh in, in this world, really. Well, let's take a look. Interestingengineering.com. Why is the hexagon everywhere? All about this seemingly common shape. Now, look at this. A hexagon uh, encompassing that of a large geographical area of a planet. That within, you know, turtles, within nature, things like this, right? Take a look at this. And I quote, The force that makes the winter grow its feathered hexagons of snow and drives the bee to match at home. Their calculated honeycomb is a Bacchus and Rose combined. All right, end quote. Let us see why hexagon show, uh, hexagons show up so often at, in nature. Now, I, the other thing I want to mention too is members will also know about the hexagonal base on Mars. This is going to be very significant and we're going to be elaborating on this in the upcoming members episode. So take a look at this. The, and I quote, the shapes started to appear at about seven revolutions per second. That's the same amount, excuse before I go on, that's the same amount of planks. That this gentleman right over here, let's just jump back very quickly, that Dan Winters is referring to. Again, Planck, Phi, 117. You see 118, 116. The Holy Grail of Fusion, seven different elements in order to access this anti-gravity propulsion or the flux liner or the ether, whatever you want to call it. Okay, now let's jump back here very quickly. In one experiment... The researchers at the Technical University of Denmark in Lingby created several shapes by spinning water at different speeds. They poured water into the bucket and set the bucket to spin. With increased speeds, the triangle changed into a square and then to a pentagon. But at the highest speeds, the resultant shape was that of a hexagon. Even the researchers were unable to give a clear explanation on why the hexagon is formed when water spins at high speeds." End quote. Now, for those that might be saying, Dave, you know, the Merkaba, the, the symbol of the Merkaba rotating or the artificial Merkaba and things like that. It's a little bit separate than the, than the Merkaba, but let me explain. And the reason why I say this is, again, I could be wrong, but the evidence suggests that the hexagonal structure is that, to inf that of an energetic form to influence that of free will. Free will cannot be broken, but it could be coerced or influenced. How do we know that? Let's take a look at this right here. Forgottenbooks.com. By the way, folks, this is actually a great website for... Um, 
very old books that are not in the mainstream media. This is a, a book by a quantum, uh, if I'm not mistaken, excuse me, a physicist who's trying to understand the ether and the composition of science that those within STEM and the public academia do not at least claim to know publicly. Anyways, and I quote, material science has held that the universe is composed of two principles. One is matter and the second is energy or force. Some hold that these two principles really are aspects of the same thing and that there is really but one principle, one aspect of which is shape, form, etc. and called matter. The other, a quality manifesting in motion, which quality is called force. Again, manifesting in motion. What does that sound like? Does that, does that not just sound like the experiment that was conducted? Now, you're going to see how this connects to some of the more, I guess you could say, larger New World Order influences shortly, but let's take a look at this right here. Others hold that force is the real thing and matter, but a form of force. All branches hold to the idea that matter and energy are always found together and cannot be thought of separately. Matter and force are held to be eternal and infinite, it following that there can be no addition or subtraction from either, all apparent loss and gain, creation and destruction, being but change of form or mode. God is declared unnecessary and the universe is held to operate according to certain laws of matter or force, which are unchangeable and immutable, eternal and always val valid. Now, take a look at this final part, folks. Mind and thought are held to be products of properties of matter or force, secreted, evolved or produced in the brain. All right, the soul is relegated to the waste heap and discarded as useless in the new philosophy, end quote. Now, please dismiss that last sentence, but take a look at the manifestations in the way they're discussing here where matter and force manifest itself in different ways relative to that of the circulation in the way it's manifested within the vis visualization within one's mind, which could also be the case as to why, again, when people have mental health issues, they have, sometimes people tend to generally, um, I guess you could say, uh, cr form coping mechanisms in a mental sense. You see what I'm saying? The Excuse me, they form coping mechanisms which allows them to visualize things. So, for example, people who astral project, they tend to visualize themselves leaving their body before they actually do, right? That's number one. Now, let's take a look at this right over here. This is Blue Blood, alienshift.com, Stuart Swerdlow. A gifted medical intuitive, Stuart Swerdlow, is a clairvoyant who has the ability to see auric fields and personal archetypes as well as read DNA sequences and mind patterns. Now, before I go on, I just want to say I'm not trying to prop up this particular gentleman. We're going to see in the members' episodes how... I'm just going to say it how certain adrenochrome apparatuses allow for this too in an artificial sense, which is why there's more limits to that. But anyways, his great uncle, Yakov Sverdlov, was the first president of the Soviet Union, and his grandfather helped form the Communist Party in the United States in the 1930s. All right. He spent years in service to ver uh, various U.S. and foreign government agencies and special interest group. Okay. Now, after... Sorry, his mind and body were used for genetic and mind control experiments, which led to severe illness, broken relationships, and premature kundalini activation. All right. Now, a lot of people say with regards to Kundalini, there's a certain timing relative to that in, the, in which it must be activated pertaining to that of an individual in a spiritual sense. But take a look at this. After several years of deep self-analysis, Stuart merged with higher levels of his multidimensional self, which saved his life. His mission is to help others heal themselves in a positive way, thus avoiding the negativity he experienced. All right. End quote. Now. Interestingly enough, if you take a look at yesterday's Let's Get Banned episode, there was someone who tweeted that people that have, you know, things like autism, uh, d depression, bipolar dis disorder that cannot be explained in a physical or scientific chemical sense is actually because their subconscious and higher self and the other 90% of our brains, because they say we only use about 10%, is actually communicating in that of a larger ascentive, uh, I guess you could say, um, entropic dignification if you want to call it basically meaning a higher level essentially right and so the fact that we are forced in the physical realm to be brought back to this third and fourth dimension physical realm is not it is not exactly healthy for us in a mass way and this is again going back to the let's get banned episode about the regalions and influencing all of this but anyways let's take a look at this right over here sciencedirect.com Production and reference material, hexagonal graphite, is the thermodynamically stable form of graphite with an ABAB stacking sequence of the graphene layers. The exact crystallographic description of this allotropic form is given by the space group D6H4-PG uh, cubed. Excuse me. Now, end quote. Take a look at this right here. Carbon group elements. However, when we jump on over to this right here, 
ZambianObserver.com, weird but true. Boy shed skin every month like a reptile. I'm not saying that he's an alien or anything like this. I don't mean to disrespect his particular skin condition. However, for those that have not heard before, it's very likely that there was a form of energetic dissemination emitting from Angel's Peak, as Noah reported, as we saw in the beginning of this episode, saying, we're going to look because, you know, there's some anomalous things going on. You're going to look for anomalous things on a classified military uh, territory? Really? So... That's like saying, you know, you just bought a house, but I've, 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 I don't know, I don't know what's in the basement. No idea. I've been living in the house for 10 years now. No idea. That's exactly what that is. Literally. Anyways, you see this right here? He is shedding scales, if you want to call them. We'll, we'll call them scales for the sake of visualization and understanding in hexagonal shapes. Again, y folks, you can't make this stuff up. Now, let's take a look at this right here, mysteriousuniverse.org. Now, this has to do pertaining to Robert Bigelow starting the Bass uh, Division, having to do with uh, Bigelow Aerospace and uh, base standing for a whole bunch of other gibberish, essentially trying to find a, disclo a disclosure, spending hundreds of millions of dollars uh, with regards to UFOs. Now, look at this, though. This is what Bass found, his particular institution, that Harry Reid helped um, sort of give uh, validity to when Harry Reid secured the, I think, $20 million for the, um, I believe it was ATIP, um, uh, ATIP program. Anyways, take a look. Overview of the Bass Physics de decisions, uh, Division's efforts to conduct research on advanced aerospace vehicles, including the development of standardization for measurement of, of physical effects and signatures associated with UAP. Mention of Skinwalker Ranch in Utah as a possible laboratory for studying other intelligences and possible interdimensional phenomena. All right. Mention of Bass Program dug, uh, dubbed Project Northern Tier, which involves securing documents related to instances where dozens of UFOs flew over restri restricted airspaces of facilities housing nuclear weapons. Again, photographs of UAPs provided by various sources, including foreign governments, summaries of multiple UAV events, both inside the U.S. and in foreign countries. End quote. Why do I bring this up? Folks, this is soft disclosure. These points are parallel with that of the NOAA, uh, NOAA study or investigation in 2013, excuse me. The only difference is NOAA's studies were inconclusive, but their observations were equal to that of Bass's conclusions. Tell me, the, what are the odds? Now, the question then becomes, how do they hide this? How is this so, you know, so well hidden? Well, let's take a look at this right over here. This is UFOjoe.net. Now, I do want to say, I have actually had personal interactions with, uh, with this uh, gentleman on Twitter. He seems to be a pretty solid guy. I, I respect him quite significantly for his ability to be open and expand his perception on so many things. Former CIA, CIA operations officer Jim Semivan comments on the Wilson slash Davis documents. Anyways, this is a, an interview with a reporter off the record, so to speak, having to do with them uh, knowing about extraterrestrials and what they can and can't talk about. And you'll see what I'm getting at here. And I quote, the, so Melinda Leslie's the interviewer, and Jim Semivan is the um, the interviewee, former CIA agent. He says, we have to say no comment because of our clearances still. We are bound by our oaths. We have those oaths till our death. Even if one sentence in the document is classified or dealing with something that is, we cannot comment on the entire document. We are friends with many of the individuals mentioned. We do not want to create problems or difficulties for them. He's referring to TTSA. Paraphrasing, it would be embarrassing for them, cause them grief, legalities arise, uh, detrimental towards their jobs, posi positions, projects. Again, I, I absolutely right. They would get ridiculed, right? Now, the interviewer says, what is TTSA's position on the Wilson document, the alleged, you know, Admiral Wilson leak admitting outside of the building of EG&G that, again, he implied Lockheed Martin was the one um, with the most advanced uh, extraterrestrial technology. And then again, he responds, we don't have a position. We simply can't comment. You see? Because of oath of secrecy, we're not allowed even when we know something or may want to say. Then the interviewer says, what is TTSA's game plan regarding the documents? He says, no game plan for TTSA. We'll see where it goes. And then the interviewer gets a little specific. Did Eric write it? No comment. Again, you see how they do it now. Let's jump into this right over here. You take a look at this. WRC.NOAA.gov. Conveniently, again, on the NOAA website. See the, the correlation there? proprietary information and trade secrets secrets excuse me by the way i thought NOAA, noaa i thought they had nothing to do with patents and things like this again just like how um uh, snowden back in 2013 revealed the secret fisa court they're just going to keep making secret rules and things like this take a look with regards to why they can't release documents the economic espionage act of 1996 defines trade secrets as all forms and types of financial business scientific technical economic or engineering information including 
patterns, plans, prototypes, methods, blah, blah, blah. Basically, everything that we would want to know with regards to extraterrestrials and patenting, this law essentially covers all of that. Conveniently enough, the Economic Espionage Act was signed in 1996, by the way, very shortly after Phil Schneider began speaking about the Dolce Base incident. Now, is that a coincidence? Very possible. It might not be. Now, if we go back to the blue blood auras, what we're going to find, folks, is that there is, in fact, a form of plasmoid that is emitted outside of remote viewers like Yuri Geller and Dan Winter and many others who have found that the access to the ether could be harnessed in different forms, which is why, again, we look back at Hitler. He had different apparatuses of anti-gravity. Some were Vril-based, some were more magic-based, more occult-based, if you will, some more technologically direct and oriented in a standard type of way. With that being said, however, the hexagonal harvesting is used because these insectoid species, believe it or not, are actually trying to harvest the vast majority of these hexagonal shapes in order to curate free will because the regalions know you cannot break free will, but you can coerce it. You see what I'm saying? Just like how you cannot, technically speaking, make a Merkaba on your own, you can make an artificial one. Again, sort of like making a knockoff of a toy, if you want to call it, right? Anyways, take a look at this right here. ResearchGate.net. Cross-section of human retina showing the hexagonal structure of the photoreceptor cones densely packed in the favea pixel centers. Approximately 13% fewer pixels are required to represent the same image resolution as required on a rectangular grid with unit horizontal and vertical separation of pixel centers. End quote. 13%. You see 1.3 from the planks that we spoke about with the Dan Winter article that we looked at. The number three, you see the reoccurrences here. Again, there's, I do have to say, at this point, we can't, we, we, we can't, we can't deny what's happening here, right? Now, the final thing I want to say, I, I want to, sorry, reference is this right here. And this is, I left this to the end because I didn't want to sort of throw this in the face of those who are not members on Patreon, but members, you'll see shortly what this will relate to. Most-interestingthings.com. Archaeologists find 3,300-year-old claw of a bird that went extinct 700 years ago. All right. Scientists have estimated that uh, the Earth to be more or less 4.5 billion years old, predating even human existence. However, this giant claw was discovered by the members of the New Zealand Spele Speleological Society in 1987. They were traversing the cave, syst cave systems of Mount Owen in New Zealand when they unearthed a breathtaking find. End quote. Now, before I go on, I just want to bring this up quickly before I sort of forget. If you take a look at Mount Owen in New Zealand, you're going to see a lot of private property purchased through third party individuals that seem to be extremely guarded and have privatized restricted access. There's also an insurmountable amount of radiation allegedly coming from you. All you have to do is take a simple EMF device reader and go bring it there. Now, again, could it be possible underground experiments? Uh, I mean, again, if you take a look, for example, at a Patreon call we had uh, two or three months ago, I, I, I'm surprised I even can remember this. A very good valued member of the community asked another valued member of the community who has some insight on things why New Zealand as a country outputs more energy than it, in, it, than it takes in. How's that even possible? Then it, how's that even possible? So, again, right? With that being said, folks, there were hexagonal structures found within the DNA of this particular claw. So, we're seeing here the curation of a, repeat, a repetitive pattern in an attempt to try, I guess you could say, to coerce free will. So, this might not have been the most exciting episode in the world, but I want you uh, folks to let me know what you think, and we'll catch all of you very, very soon. Cheers.